All right, so we're going to get started. I'm really happy that you're all joining me tonight to, <laughs> to do this little text study. Um, you know, if you've ever come to one of the, the sessions that I've led at Shul before or online, um, you'll know I don't come, I don't, I'm not a teacher. I don't, I don't have anything to like tell you or teach you. I have like questions and things that I've looked at and um, um, questions I want to share and things I want to explore together. And um, so this is very participatory. If you don't want to participate, um, we do need all three of you, but <laughs> you know, if you really don't want to participate, you know, now's the time to check out. Um, maybe the people who came last time really regretted participating. Um, oh, no. no, I'm joking. Uh, so, um, so what we're talking about tonight, um, I don't even have the title of it in front of me, but basically we're going to be exploring Birkota Shachar, um, some of the, the blessings that we say uh, every morning um, in the traditional text. I've been using, uh, you know, this is, we're an Ashkenazi shul. Uh, I hope that we, I hope that I don't offend anybody. I didn't look up any other Nusach for the Brachot that we're going to study, but if anyone has any other um, uh, Nusach that they um, subscribe to, please, you know, any, any input or ideas are welcome. Um, but before we get started, I do, you know, it's, we're a small group, but I was hoping we could still just go around and introduce ourselves with oh. just um, one thought, which is, oh, good, great, Will is here. Um, uh, with, um, I'd love if everyone could just go around, t think for a second about a blessing from any, any blessing, forget that we're talking about Birkot Shachar, although you're welcome to talk about those, a blessing that you like saying, a blessing that you feel like you enjoy, whether it's one that you say regularly, one that you say infrequently, one that you um, uh, maybe even have never even said, but that you enjoy the idea of it. Um, we'll take like take 15 seconds to start thinking about it. Um, right I'll share first and then I'll, I'll, I'll I'll pick somebody else to go next and then we'll have that person nominate the next person to share, um, if that's all right. Um, so let's take 10 seconds just quietly. Okay. Um, so I'm Aaron. I'm happy to be teaching this class with all of you. And the blessing, a blessing that I really love to say is um, Shech Yanu. Uh, it's one that like, you know, there's usually something exciting going on, something happy. And like, it's a way to like, especially not like the times when you're saying it in, you know, a ritual necessarily, but like something really personal that's only happened to you that you feel excited about. You get, I got something new or something big happened in my life and I can like mark it with a, a bracha. That feels really special to me. Um, Leah, would you go next? Sure. So all I could think of were ones that I didn't like when, when you asked questions, but then I actually, so, so I just sort of glanced through actually just for Kaido Shachar because I couldn't, it's drawing a blank. And I actually, there is one in there that I do really like. Um, and um, I like Pokeh Ifrim, which is- um, Do not explain? Yeah. Yeah, to um, give sight to the blind, sort of. I mean, uh, interesting verbs in there, I guess, whatever. Um, but, cause it can mean so many different things. Like, oh, I, I you know, like when you have that light bulb moment, I think that, that that's sort of what I think of with that all the time, like you just sort of enlightening somebody about something like, oh, I just never saw it that way. And now I do or changing perspective or something like that. It doesn't actually have to literally be somebody who couldn't see and now can see. You're already getting us into the heart of the conversation. Sorry. Thank you, Leah. No, it's great. Can you want to nominate the next person? I nominate Hedda. All right. When I meditate and when I start doing oh. prayers, one of the things that I love doing is the Shema and the prayers right after the two paragraphs after. I don't, I'm not going to do the Hebrew, but, and I do it in English. You shall love Hashem, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul. I do that paragraph and then the next one, it was you before the world was created. It's the, it is you since the world was created, etc. I mm. find that very, very moving for me. Plus oh, very several powerful. others that I picked out that I have in my other Siddur with different translations too, which have a lot of meanings. Wonderful. Hedda, you want to pick who's gonna, who goes next? Irina's right, next, if she's here. 
Sure, sure. I, I I only had the one play. I don't I don't have the gallery on. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Is my gallery now? Yeah, do gallery. Do yeah. ga oh, because so, it's only us. All right. It's just us. <laughs> okay. I'm doing so, gallery. I, it's funny, I, I, I had a difficulty choosing between a few, and then I realized that there's something they all have in common, which is I like blessings that are markers. So I like the blessing over rain, the blessing over dew. I like, you know, they mark a time, they mark something that's changing. And then the third one is I, I very much love blessing my children every Friday night. And it's also a marker in some way. It's a weekly marker of my relationship with my children. Um, so that's, for me, I think, the, the common thread. And I nominate Willa to go next. <laughs> oh, you have Willa, to put, you're muted. You're, you have to unmute. <laughs> There you go. Okay, there it is. I like, um, hmm, I was going to say Birkat HaDerech and Birkat HaMazon. Oh. Either of those, I don't know why. Do you want, I, you want to uh, share a little bit about what, what speaks to you about either of those? Or? Sure, Birkat HaDerech is uh, something I always, I, I have in my car and my, my, um, that, what is that called? That little drawer that, um, the glove compartment. Yes. And I couldn't think of the word of it for it. And, um, I don't know, Birchat Amazon I like because it was one of the first brachot I learned, uh, to sing real loud. <laughs> I love it. And so I nominate David Cohn. David? So, David, you're muted. You're muted. And I'll tell you. No, he's stuck. He's talking. He doesn't. David, you got to unmute. There you there go. There you go. Unmuted. What is she nominating me for? Yeah, so we're introducing <laughs> ourselves, which we know your name already. But, um, and I know we're putting you on the spot, but we asked everybody to share a blessing or a prayer that particularly speaks to you, that you particularly like and why. A short explanation why. doesn't have to be your favorite, just one you like. Well, I, 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 me, I, I, I do, I like uh, very much, uh, I'm going to be very honest, very much the Shema. And because I, think, I, I feel very close to Hashem when I say the Shema, and I say it with, try to say it with Kavana, and that gets me in big trouble because everyone else speeds along at super speed, and I'm still maybe up to the Ahafta. But anyway, the Shema is very meaningful. And also certain prayers in the Amida have a very, very deep meaning. And it's a shame we go so fast in the morning and evening in the Amida because it really had tremendous kavana in those prayers. That's great. Thank you, David. And Hedda also had mentioned some parts of the Shema as her favorite prayers, uh, some of her favorite prayers. Um, well, first of all, I, I love everything I've heard so far, and it really speaks to what some of the, some of the ideas that I want to explore today about Birkot HaShachar. Um, the, some of the things that I heard that we're going to circle back to are about what brachot are. Um, they mark time. They can help us in our like sort of meditation and awareness and mindfulness, body mind relationship. Uh, they're part of our daily lives and our daily routines and they can bring us closer to, they can help us feel closer to God. Um, and then Leah really helped us look at the fact that like a lot of the blessings that we say have both a pshat, a simple understanding and also a, a lot of drash, a lot of deeper, um, deeper meaning that we can find behind them, uh, behind the, the literal translation. So what I wanted to do today, and, and by the way, David and Willa, um, I mentioned to, to the rest of the group, it's helpful if you have a C-Door handy, it'll be helpful. But again, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about the, the Birkota Shachar, the Birkota Shachar, the, um, and not even all of them, only, uh, let's see, the, the 12, 12 of those like blessings that we say at the beginning of every, of every day. So if you have it handy, that's great. If you don't, 
um, you'll just kind of follow along with us. I have two um, here. Can I, can I lend one to somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, David. Um, now, the, so the... Go that? get it. Oh. So, um, so the blessings that we're going to do are the series that start with um, um, uh, Baruch HaTashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan L'Sachvi Vina L'Avchim Ben Yom Uvein Laila. Okay, so um, we're going to start with we're going to start there with the God who gave the the rooster uh, or your heart. We'll get into that um, the ability to discern between day and night, and then we're going to continue through um, those list of blessings up until Hamavir Shena Meinai Utnuma Meafapai, the God who 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 lifts the sleep from my eyes and the slumber from my eyelids. Um, now. Before we really dive in, I want to tell you what we're not going to be talking about, at least what I did not prepare for us to talk about. I'm open to the conversation going anywhere, um, but don't, don't, lean, don't look to me if you want to talk about these following things. Um, I, I think there's a lot of interesting things to be said and thought about, about the words, Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything profound to say or think about that, but if you want to, let me know. I'm, pro I'm mostly going to be ignoring that beginning part of the blessing, which is true for almost every blessing in, uh, in our liturgy. And we're also not going to be exploring in any detail um, the, three the three negative blessings that I, that I was not made, um, not, that I was not, that you didn't make me a non-Jew, that you didn't make me a slave, and then depending on if you're a, a man or a woman, that you didn't make me a woman or that you made me according to your will. Um, my, the two reasons that we're not going to be exploring those three blessings are, first of all, they are, I think, very troubling for a lot of people. Um, but yeah. also, even just liturgically speaking, the source for them is different than from all the others. All the others come from um, the Gemara and Brachot, when they talk about what happens in the morning when you wake up in the morning and you do all these things and then you say these blessings. And those three come from Gemara and Menachot. Um, and they're not actually, when the Gemara mentions them, it doesn't say you should say this in the morning when you first wake up. There are blessings that you're supposed to say at any time. It's not even clear if everyone's supposed to say them. Like there's, there's a whole bunch of issues with those blessings. I have no idea how they ended up in this part of the morning service as opposed to anywhere else. Um, and if you had if you'd come to a class of a real teacher, maybe you would have found that out. Um, but we're gonna, so we're gonna skip those three if that's okay. But if, one, if as we're talking, if people have thoughts on them, I obviously welcome anything. Um, wonderful. So we have these, these blessings. I, what I'd like to do is I'd like to read them all together as, uh, not together, take turns having some volunteers help me read them out loud. Um, we're going to read English and Hebrew as best as we can. And then we're going to go back and discuss some of them. Um, raise your hand, not to be the first one to read, but if you're comfortable reading from the Sidor you have in front of you, either the Hebrew or the English of any of the blessings, just so I can know who to call on. I don't want to, to, uh, okay. Okay, great. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so Leah, do you want to read for us the, the first one, which I guess I already read? Sure. Baruch atah Hashem alakinu melechalam asher natan l'sechbi v'ina l'havchin v'in yom uv'in l'ayla. And my translation says, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives the heart understanding to distinguish day from night. Wonderful. Okay. That's what I have. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're on, we're, it sounds like we're looking at the same C-door. Um, Hedda, can <laughs> you... go get the C-door. Okay. I'm All right. sorry. Have to you, for a minute. you have nothing to apologize for, Willa. Um, Hedda, why don't you take us to th not the next one? So we're going to skip the next three. And you can leave out the whole blessed art thou. We're really just doing those couple words. So you want to do the next one who says, who gives sight to the blind? Who gives sight to the blind? Yes. No, that blind? one we're going to do. Yeah, we're doing that one. Who gives sight to the blind? Great. Okay. Okay. Rina, can you do the next, the next one for us? I just want to read it for oh. Sure. Malbish Arumim, who clothes the naked. Okay, David. Okay. Matir Asurim, who sets captives free. Great. 
I'll do the next one. Why the, that's interesting. It's different. Oh, yeah. What does your translation say? Who releases the bound. Ah, okay. Great. No, this is good. Um, okay. I'll, I'll do the next one. Zokef Kefufim. Who raises those bowed down. This says who okay. straightens. Oh, that's yeah, it straightens the bent. Yeah. Leia, do you want to take the next one? Yep. Roka Haaretz Al Hamayim. Who spreads the earth above the waters. Hmm. Hedda? Oh, oh, the next one? Sure. Who has provided me my every need? Mm. Okay. Shasali Koltzarki. Great. Rina? Mine says, who oh. has provided me with all I need. Yes. So and that's what's interesting. That gives you a different, totally different connotation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the one above it is the same thing when I yeah. start. And I'm be interested because I don't know. I, I can follow you if you're doing it in Hebrew. I don't want to show how bad I, I can <laughs> read, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay. That's totally fine. Okay. Um, Yep. Yep. Who firms man's footsteps. Firm. Oh. Yeah, same thing. Makes firm. See that? Yours is better. David. <laughs> <laughs> Who firms man's footsteps. Let's interpret that guy. I have that too. David, you want to do the next one? Sure. Um, Ozer Yisrael, Big Vuram, um, <clears throat> who girds Israel with strength. Oh, wow. oh, who guards Israel this way? <laughs> okay. Um, let, uh, oh, I'll do the next one. Uh, Oter Yisrael Betifara, who crowns Israel with glory. glory. Leah, do you want to do the next? Yep. Ev Koach, who gives strength to the weary. Is someone Wonderful. using a, a burn bound? By any chance? Um, oh. I'm not. Do you, do you oh, have a burn bound, Willa? Oh. Well, I want to know what page we're on. <laughs> oh, it's pretty oh. early in the service. Um, if you can find the uh, the Yigdal, the Adon Olam and the Yigdal, at the very beginning of the Sidor, it's okay. it's the page after Yigdal. You, I, uh, I, uh, I mean, I have a burn bound. You want me to get it? Let's see. Would that be helpful? That won't help. Well, I give you the page. Oh, okay. If you want, I'll go get it. If I can find, it. I'll be back in thirty seconds. Thank you, David. Uh, see, um, yeah, burn bomb is just for Shabbos and holidays. <laughs> now, this is a daily prayer book. Oh no, my, no, this is the art scroll. Heather, do you want to read the last one for us? Oh, the last Son one? Who gives, yeah. No, I th oh, I thought that was already read. Who gives strength well, to the world? And then the, the, the beginning of the next paragraph, there's oh, a... there's a. Oh, yeah. the whole blessed are, oh, wait a minute, universe. Uh, remove sleep from my eyes and slumber from my eyelids. Yes, perfect. Yep. Hama avir sheina me'enai utnuma me'af hapai. Who removes Is that the Christ. whole paragraph in here? Well, yeah, we, that, the whole, it really, there should be a paragraph break there, probably. Um, yeah. Okay, I do want to give David a second to get back. Um, but we can actually start with this. Does anyone familiar with um, the Gemara lists a bunch of actions that are associated with these blessings, things that you're saying these blessings, blessings in reaction to? Today, we, we, generally we say them once we are in our prayer routine, whether that's at home or shul or somewhere else. But when they were drafted, they were actually meant to be said. I got the burn bomb. Oh, wonderful. Now we're going to the, the brachot in the beginning. They, it's like after page 15, because that has a double no alarm on page 12. This is uh, the morning service in Birnbaum. Page, I'll tell you where it starts. Page 16. Uh, Oh, that was one page after the preliminary right. morning service. And in my birth. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, okay. Preliminary morning service. I have that. That's that. right. That's that's right. right. Yeah. I want to see what mine I has. I have that. 
Okay. He's more formal. It's like, art thou, Lord our God? But wait, so I'm going to go back. Okay, wait. So here's my question. The Gemara says we're supposed to say these blessings when certain things happen in the morning. Anyone either know or want to take a guess what morning actions might trigger some of these blessings? Opening your eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Opening breathing. your eyes. Breathing. <laughs> okay. Which one would you say for breathing? Do you know which blessing would you say for breathing? Because that's actually not one I, I, was, I knew of. Okay, I'll go back to this mic. Mm. Right. Open, I think when you open your eyes in the morning, right, Willa said, so pokeach ivrim, right, who gives sight to the blind or who opens the eyes of the blind. I think there's a couple others that we could at least take a good guess at. Close the naked, so that would be when you get dressed. Yep, I would think so. Yep, when you cover your body up in the morning. The release. Hmm. But that bound, I don't know. There's all kinds yeah. of here, right? Yeah, so that one's, the, the Gemara is a little, you know, the difference between releasing the bound and straightening the, the bent over. Um, what I read was basically, Matir Asurim is when you sit up and stretch. Yeah, well, that's what they okay. were saying. And then Zokef Kifufim, because you're still bent over in bed, theoretically. Let's say you sit up in bed, then you stand, okay? Zokef Kifufim, you're now out of bed. Now, somehow there's some distinction between standing up out of bed and then actually standing on the floor, okay? Rokaha Aretz Al Hamayim, God uh, spreads yeah. the land uh, over the sea. And again, theoretically, the, the, the vision is that the nature has it that water should cover land and that somehow God created land that can stay above earth. And so we're saying, thank you, God, that our feet can rest on firm land. So when we place our feet on the ground, we say, Rokaha Aretz Al Hamayim. God made sure that there's land that our feet can go on. Anyone want to guess Shasali Koltsarki, what that, that God provides me with all that I need, what the rabbis thought that should correspond to? I, I would I would put the breath there. Oh okay. all I need to be alive. That's what I thought too. Yeah. I, they, but it's interesting the order where they put it, who has provided me with all I need. You need breath. You need unless unless that's breakfast. <laughs> Could we're be. gonna get into this. We're gonna <laughs> We're going to touch on the blessings for food in a little bit. Actually, so David, I like your interpretation better. That's not what the rabbi said. The rabbi said, when you put your shoes on. Yeah. yeah. Well, what rabbi said that? <laughs> Just, <laughs> the tell, Come the on. Tell, you, you know, the ones in the Talmud. You know, no, not a big deal. Just the. You put your shoes on. That's they're lucky they, they had shoes. Maybe that's why they said a blessing about it. <laughs> um. The next one's, I think, pretty straightforward. Hamechim Mitzah de Gaver, who makes firm the steps of, you know, what, what translation do we have? Um, yeah, who makes firm the steps of, of, of people, right? So we can take some first steps, you walk around. Ozer um, Yisrael Bigvura, who girds Israel with strength. Any guesses? It's when you put your belt on in the morning. Yeah. Put mm. your belt on, either because you know, then your clothing is tight, you're ready for action, or maybe even, you know, you might gird your sword on your belt, and that's like our source of, uh, you know, of strength in the, in, in the, in the, out in the world. Oter Yisrael Batifara crowns us with glory, crowns, crowns Israel with glory. What? Um, yeah. 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 When you cover, when you cover your head. Oh, uh, you know, keep on, or put, cover, the, put ropes well, to, the, the villain. Well, well, yeah, well, that could, it could be tefillin, it could be a kippah or any head covering. The Whatever symbolic um, uh, thing reminds you that God's above you. It's sort of a crown that serves a double purpose. It's like our glory and also reminding us of, of God um, being above us. And fi I mean, not fi the last two are, are the same. Hanotein le'ayif koach, who gives the tired strength. They say when, once you feel awake. Once you actually feel like the sleep has washed off of you and you're, you're ready for your day, which as I think many of us know, doesn't happen until after you've gotten out of bed, you've gotten dressed, you've already got your hat out, you're ready to walk out the door, then maybe you start to feel, to actually feel awake. You have your coffee. And so, so exactly, yes. So yeah, would, you, would you then, if you do this stuff in a different order, 
Would you then say these in a different order? That's, that's good, Leah. Good, Leah. Ask the next question. Ask the question <laughs> that comes after that question, Leah. <laughs> Leah, what's the question that comes after that question? Can I, can I make a comment? I, yeah, I think the, our tr the translations and what we're talking about is really on a very, very basic level. And I think to answer Leia's question is to scratch a little deeper and to see how we as Jews are different and what our goals are in this world from the morning, from, from the, from the morning in relationship to, uh, to God, to Hashem. If we take it from that, then I'd like to see what we could do with what Leah is saying. What do you think is the primary blessing when we get it and go from yeah. there? I think it's a great, it's a great point. And, and by the way, for sure, I mean, the, the order and the associations between these blessings and our daily routine, our morning routine is, is just the basic level of this thing. And it's going to, it can get a lot deeper. Well, Leah, the cool. question that I thought was going to come next was, does a blind person say, uh, yeah, does, but, does yeah. Uh, someone who's yeah. imprisoned say, Matira Surim, well, you know, I, who, who releases the bound? I would um, say yes if you're not getting so literal. Well, um, if yeah, someone who's cr who who cannot walk at all, someone who's yeah. completely, you know, should they? So those are questions that the rabbis grappled with. They love those kinds of questions. Yeah. So um, ultimately, they came down to, the, despite the fact that these, and and this probably is also tied to the fact that we now don't say these in the morning, corresponding with individual actions, and we wait. You, you, until we're in the prayer yeah. service. Um, they said everyone should say all of them, even if they don't apply to them. Um, and I'm going to break my rule from earlier. Even people who were, if you're people who are converted, most people say you, sh you should say, I wasn't created, that you didn't make me a non-Jew. Um, because these are, these are universal prayers in, or universal within the Jewish, either within the Jewish community or truly universal prayers that we're saying, thank you to God for these acts, for these things that you've given humanity. Um, and once we get into the deeper levels, it mean, it also kind of hits into some of the, the more, the more, um, um, the, the metaphors that we're going at, right? Right. Like for example, the, the, you, you specifically mentioned gives, giving sight to the blind. Right? There's a lot of ways that, that, that people who are blinded can have their, their metaphorical eyes opened, uh, even whether or not they have functioning eyeballs. Right? So I'm, uh, I'm also going to break your rule now and also point out that the Loa Sani Isha is not said by everybody. Correct. Interesting. Correct. Well, it wasn't prescribed to be said by everyone. Right. But right. Right. Interesting that like you might not fall into a whole bunch of these categories, mm, mm, mm. but that one is right. still like well, it's a the, different box. The conservative Sidur has eliminated that and changed it, you know. Yeah, you know that there are a lot of Sidurim from way, way, way back that didn't have it in the first place, but I know we're not getting into this. Okay, yeah, we're we're gonna we're going a little far afield. Um I think so the trouble one. I'm sorry. I said I well, think that's a bad one. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I think I, th I think you're in good company, Willa, and um, and that's that's part also why I don't really want to. I don't find it to be whether good or bad. I don't find it to be inspiring or giving people much um, to grow from. And that's what kind of I'm hoping to give people a little bit more thought when they're doing. It gives think more things to think about when people are saying the Birkhot Shachar. So that's why we're going to kind of stay away from those three. Um, so before we dive, I want to dive into some of the drash, some of the deeper interpretations that we might bring to these blessings. Uh, but before that, I kind of want to just touch for a second on a little bit of what Hedda was talking about earlier with her meditation, a little bit of what Willa was talking about in terms of um, the the daily routineness of these blessings, and also a little bit of what Rena said in terms of um, the marking time. And I honestly think, you know, I, the the I, I think I used the word meditation in the um, in the um, title of this of this session. And I think that 
when you stop and think about these blessings and the actions that they're meant to correspond to, it's a wonderful inter um, invitation to just slow down and think about those little things, right? The time when you wake up in the morning, it really, and we skipped the first one, I realized, right? Um, who gave uh, wisdom to our hearts to determine between night and day, right? The first moment of consciousness in the day when you realize, oh, it's time to get up. I'm gonna, it's time to get up, right? Like every little step along the way, you, you, you get your feet out, out of the bed, you open your eyes, um, you take a first step, you put your belt, you feel, you know, you feel your clothes tightening around your body, you tie your shoes. Those little moments Aren't that often you just- your face before this? What? And say, don't you, you wash you? your rock before this? Um, before I guess- Things? Um, yes, I mean, nowadays, again, we don't say these blessings in the moment. Um, when you actually first wake up. Um, so maybe I'm not here. Maybe that's Pokeh Ivrim. Well, I think there is an idea of washing your hands first thing when you wake up in the morning and you would wash your face a little bit as well. I don't know, I stay with these Haredim in Israel all the time and that's what they do. They walk, oh. they when they wash their face in the morning and that's, the first thing they do. And well, then maybe it. we have something to learn from them. That's what, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful idea, I think. But I, I guess all I'm saying is whether you say it actually in the moment or whether you're stopping, because again, we're, 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 we may not appreciate our, our sight all day, those of us who are sighted, um, but we are seeing throughout the day. And when we get to this point in the prayer, you can stop and actually like close your eyes, open your eyes, look around, appreciate the vision, appreciate the feeling of your feet on the ground. Um, I'm not a, a meditation instructor, but you know I've participated in a few mindfulness and meditation exercises, and it's it's taking appreciation for those little things, right? David mentioned the breath being um, cold, our key, right? Everything that I need, right? But we spend most of our day, we spend all of our days breathing, thank God, um, and we spend very little of our days thinking about the fact that we're that we're breathing. At least those of us for whom breathing is not difficult, um, and so. Um, I, I, I love to see, first of all, at, at the surface level, just the appreciation Aaron, that we your, have. Your sound is getting a little... Oh, no. Mm, okay. What? I don't know. Does that... Sound fine for me? Fine. Okay. Okay, okay here. I'm doing okay here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Leah, maybe your connection's bad. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, and the last... You yeah, know, and it might just be me. Yeah. And similarly, I would, I would, you know, even even now as we're thinking about it, you know, you might want to take the opportunity when we think, when we, as we're discussing the drash, you know, it's okay for Kufufim, you can straighten your back a little bit. You might want to wiggle your toes on the ground when we get to Rokaha Aretz Alha, um, Alha Mayim. You can do some eye exercises when we're talking about Keach Ivrim. It's really a, a reminder that our blessings, or our, our bodies are very much connected to our, to our souls in this way, and that at least as, as Jews, we, we, our faith doesn't tell us that the mind is all that matters, right? The mind and the body are intimately, and, and the soul are intimately connected, um, mm -hmm. and, and that can't be, and that really can't be ignored, and it really should be praised, and is part of our, our most foundational prayer uh, for God every day, to God every day. Um, yeah. Good to hear. That's someone? That's... No? Okay. Um, so I'm curious, I want to I want to get into some of the interpretations. Uh, pick a few of the blessings. Is there is there any one of the blessings that we've read so far that anyone wants to dive into and really think through what some some different interpretations could be? I'm looking over. Well, to me, the one that still feels the most obscure is Roka Ha'aretz al Hamayim, spreading the earth oh, and waters. It feels very distant from anything personal, anything bodily. It really just, it's different than um, firming one's footsteps or providing one's needs or, you know, giving strength. It just, something it's remote mm. well i have something down here <laughs> in, oh, okay. uh, in the notes with it it says um by nature water spreads and wait a minute i need to get it's so small wait a minute i have a magnifying glass <laughs> um 
wait a minute, where is it now? Uh, by nature, water spreads and floods everything in its path, while earth tends to sink beneath the surface of the water. God formed the earth so that it remains always in place. Now that even is a little esoteric to me, even the def you know, the interpretation. Yeah. I, I learned um, the use of the term water was giving the Torah. And I forget where exactly it comes from where uh, God says, you'll open your mouth and fill it with water, meaning he'll pour Torah into it. So here they reverse it. And if you said, if you believe, if you felt that water is a metaphor for Torah, I'm a God who spreads the earth. In other words, the bodily needs have to come first, then you could learn Torah. Mm. Take it that's that nice. way. Oh, wow, that's an interesting, oh. I I like what that. prayer, I, you know, I can't remember anymore. My brain is becoming water. Uh, <laughs> but, but you open your mouth and pour, and, and, and God will fill with water. And it, it doesn't mean with water, it means with Torah. Mm -hmm. So we use the same exactly. metaphor here. Yeah. I'm seeing that, this, well, because all of these things mostly are physical, that yeah, so the earth well, has to come first, and then, and then after the earth, then, th then you the start Torah. Learning the Torah. Anyway, that's that's it. fascinating. Yeah, and I mean, that's one, that's a great um, suggestion to Rena's question, which was saying pretty much the rest of these blessings are about our bodies, about yeah. our, func our, our human function. This doesn't seem to be one of those. So David's interpretation is of a definitely an interesting one. And it went, Rena, were you, did you have any thinking, any other, or you're purely puzzled? No, it really struck me as very different than the others. Um, I hadn't thought it. Thought yeah. it. The, Let's see. A, another, a, an interpretation I had thought of was that perhaps there's an ecological uh, element here. And mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, we cannot, humans cannot exist in a vacuum, right? God created this world for us to live in. God created the environment that we stand on. Um, <laughs> we, we're not floating through space. Our atoms are not pulverizing, right? There's this, th this was the rabbi's word of saying that God created an ecosystem for us. Um, <laughs> and that without that ecosystem, we would not be able to survive. We would not then be able to do all those other things. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that, that was a, th a thought I had as I was thinking about these. Um, but yeah, it's a bizarre one. That one took me a while to even like wrap my head around. It's kind of like gravity. Right? I mean, just like yeah. the structure for like, we'd all just be floating away. It's laws of physics that are just, we're just thanking God for the, for basic physics. Really right, we're grounded. We're grounded. Lay, you are breaking up a little bit. Um, I'm sorry. For anybody. Um. You know, Lay, you had mentioned Pokeach Ivrim. Yes. So you want to dive into that one a little bit more? Yeah. So, so, we... so, yeah, I hope that you can hear me. I'm having a lot of trouble hearing something's going on with the, evidently they were trying to fix the internet in the house for Eliana, so they're screwing up mine. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, so so yeah, my thoughts on this were Which were one? Which oh, one Pokeach, oh, Pokeach Ivrim. Pokeach Ivrim, give right. sight to the blind. Oh, so yeah. so I was thinking about like what are the ways that we can be blind, right? And and then what are the ways that we can give sight to that? And it could just it could be just as simple as like. Oh, you know, a, a thought just comes to you that didn't come to you before mm -hmm. that, you know, you were struggling with some way to see something and all of a sudden now you see it a different way or it could be seeing something from another person's perspective, right? Like you're really butting heads with somebody or a group of people or whatever it is and now you can see it from the other way or maybe now you see yourself. Maybe now you see like something that you were doing that maybe you see it from another person's perspective and maybe you can change that. Um, I don't know, I'm just, now words are just coming out and I'm just hearing them. <laughs> I think it's giving understanding and knowledge that there's 
a God above you. And that's the response to the board. It's like right in the morning, this is a very important prayer. And it actually it goes along with the first prayer. Israel, where you're really opening up, please God, listen to my prayers. That's what Matovu. And here, giving sight to the blind. You're giving, you, 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 want, you, want, you want to know that there is a God, and, and a functioning God. Being God. Yeah. Well, I think, and that's, a, that's a, and maybe, uh, David, what you're saying right now might be a suggest, one possible answer to this. I'm just wondering, because I'm, I'm going to go out there on a limb and say that between the six of us, we've said this prayer hundreds, thousands oh. of times. Yep. Um, what are we blind to? And you don't have to, you can either think to yourself or say something out loud. You don't have to say it out loud if you don't want to. But like, we say every morning, thank you, God, for giving sight to the blind. Yes, when your eyes are closed at night, you know. You're not, you're not seeing, but really like, what are we blind to that? We're thanking God for helping bring us some enlightenment or, or asking for enlightenment, right? In some ways, this is a beseeching. It's not just a, an appreciation, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, just thanking us. Thank you for just having the new day to be alive too. For sure. Or That's for sure. All, the things, all the things that you may not appreciate in your day, right? Like you, you know, you're walking down the street and I, I mean, just even nature things or, or, or people things or all, I mean, everything that you just go through your day on rote and, and right. you're not, and you're blind to all the stuff that's right in front of you. Yeah. Right. I always remind myself, you know, when I'm interacting with somebody, uh, maybe in a difficult situation, I try to tell myself, maybe this is that person's worst day of their year. Right, I'm clearly blind to what that person's day was like before I crossed their paths. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, God, give me some insight. I don't need to know the details of that person's life, but help me have some appreciation. Leah said, use the language, I think seeing, seeing from someone else's perspective. Um, I, think, I think, yeah, and, and, and again, and David, it also can go as much to, you know, I feel blind to, or, you know, I could feel, or I have felt, or I do feel, blind to God's existence, blind to the truth of, of faith. And that can be another aspect of blindness that we're asking God to help us be healed from uh, or, or um, give us some sight, some vision. Let's move on to another one. Um, it, I'm happy to suggest unless someone else wants to pick one. What about setting captives free? Ah, that's the one I was going to go to. Wonderful. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's see. If, I want to read those words. Let's look at it just and and hear from some of the different translations we have. So the Hebrew words are matir asurim. Okay, matir, mutar, let go, liberate. A little bit of that. Asurim, it means like the bound. Even like um, a beit asurim is a prison uh, in modern Hebrew. Um, so. That's captive free. Yes. So I, my translation in the uh, Koran says, who sets captives free. Yeah, I'll use the Koran also. Yeah. Yes. Anyone else have a different translation that seems compelling? We have the beer yeah. bomb. Art Scroll says releases the bound. Releases yeah. the bound. Uh, the beer bomb says, set us the captives free. Yeah. Oh, set us, oh, set us the captives free. Ooh, I like that. Set <laughs> us the captives free. Um, what page right. is that? 16 or, page 18, or eight, 18. 18? Yeah. And it's, oh, yeah. I was ahead. So, yeah, Rena. I have sort of a strong reaction to that. But, I mean, that actually, thinking about that, um, I don't know about anyone else, but sometimes if I wake up in the middle of the night, and I find myself about to go to anxiety, like ruminating almost on, um, you know, something that um that's from the day that's gonna and I and I have to say to myself, don't think, don't think, don't think, because I want to be able to go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. And um, in a way, I could read this, you know, being released from the 
from bondage, sort of waking up in the morning as let it go, right? Just like, don't get, don't be bound, don't be constricted by certain worries, anxieties, thoughts. Try to just face a new day, letting go of that and, um, you know, releasing. I love that. Very good. I love that, it, especially because if you really think about it, I mean, what could it possibly mean that somehow when we're asleep and our bodies are, are at rest, that we're bound, right? And that when we wake up, we've been freed, like somebody who's been freed from jail. But Rena, I love that. The fact that we, our minds can sometimes be um, the source of, of our, um, you know, the shackles of the mind are holding us back. And actually yeah. the, clar the clarity of the day can free us to go about and do, do what we need to do. Yeah. So I have a, a something in my sitter that that sort of speaks to that. Um, that maybe it's a habit that you're bound to, which mm -hmm. I, this really speaks to me because I think about this all the time, right? Habit. Oh, what happened? I guess she froze. Uh, she froze. <laughs> okay. All right, but yeah, I mean, habits habits are hard to break from, and if I there's anything that let them free, let them free from being. Leah, yeah. <laughs> Leah's caught. <cool. laughs> we need a pl we need a prayer for better internet connections. Um, oh, there she goes. <laughs> okay, Leah, you did freeze, but we heard that, that we heard habits, habits. <laughs> you probably said a lot more after that. She's frozen. She's frozen again. All right, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> I want to suggest a radical interpretation for this one, if you'll permit me. Um, matir, yeah. matir is a, can also is related to the word in my mind like mutar, like permissible. In 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 when you're talking about in halachic discourse, if something is mutar, it's permitted. Um, and asur in rabbinic discourse is forbidden, right? And so matir asurim. I'm not. This is a this is an unauthorized interpretation right? That God at least has the, not saying that we have the potential, but that God has the potential to permit the forbidden or maybe even permit the impossible. And that in some ways there's about something about the unlimited potential that God gives us. Mm -hmm. The things that we think, and maybe it's even related to the anxiety um, that Rena said can sometimes cripple us, but right, like that God has created a world where anything is possible, even the things that in our minds we've conceived of as being a sewer off, off sure. limits, um, that God can, can free us from those limitations that we've set for ourselves um, or society has set for us or communities, whatever it is. Um, not to say that, it's, that we are wiping away rules and societal structures, but um, that there's lots of things that we consider impossible that maybe God can, God can do anything as we know, and maybe God's giving us the, the potential to do things that we didn't think were possible. That's great, lovely. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask permission for us to go to 940, if that's okay with everybody, um, considering we got to a late start. Let's do one more, and then I want to share a final idea that will take us through the last 10 minutes or so. Then we want to pick one more blessing. And, and I guess, I hope what, I'm, what we're conveying here is that, like, that with these, these blessings, there's a lot, we're only scratching the surface of the ones that we're getting into. There's a lot that you can, that you can find, different meanings, and different meanings that will talk to you different mornings different times that you say these prayers. And so like David was mentioning earlier about how quickly we rush through the tefillah when we say it, um, this is my beseeching to everyone to slow down during the Birchot HaShachar among the other places that David recommended we slow down um, and to think and to think, and you might find a different, a different thought pops up for a different blessing on a different day. All right, let's pick one more that we want to look at together. What about who crowns Israel with glory? Ooh. Okay. Oter Yisrael Batifara. Crowns Israel with glory. Oh, you said glory, and no, I this is splendor, glory, glory. Splendor. Glory. Okay, and remember, this is the one where we said the, the literal action is when you put your hat on in the morning. Um, but it's beyond the talking about the B'nai Yisrael. And you're part of B'nai Yisrael, part of the children of Israel. So that your actions during the day, if you want to go for the day, have to be that which will reflect 
this of the Jewish people. people. And, and there's actually a bit of irony there, right? Because if you think about it, we're talking about the crown and the splendor of the Jewish people, the pride that we have in being Jewish. And what we're putting on is, again, at least the vision in my head from probably, I guess, what, like 100 years ago, is the, the cap, the cap that a simple Jew would put on every day that in many communities would identify a Jewish man as being Jewish, a man as being Jewish. As they, they, they were always wearing caps, these Jewish people, right? Um, and that, that simple cap is actually, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's secretly a crown. Most people on the street don't realize it, but it's a crown that we're wearing when we go out with a head covered or um, a, a different form of dress, something that stands out that distinguishes us as being Jewish that some people might say are, is, um, you know, something to be, I don't know, looked down on or maybe just whatever. It's just a, oh, you're just wearing a skirt. Who cares? You're wearing a skirt or you have your head covered or you um, wear a, a Star of David around your, your neck or whatever it might be. It's just a simple little nothing, a little piece of culture, a little piece of community, communal identity. And what the rabbis here are saying is you're crowning yourself with glory. You're crowning yourself with connection to, to the Almighty and a community that's, you know, the chosen people, whether chosen for, chosen for what is a separate conversation, but, um, you know, to something special. Mm. That's interesting. I, I, Dave, I like that. I really like that idea. Well, I think it's also a good thing politically to have uh, that because uh, I think today, we tend to be victims of so much crap. I don't know how to say it, but the BBD, B, what is that? BDS? BDS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like a lot of crap. Well, I was well, gonna yeah. say, if you were in my age category, and I remember as a boy and as a young man, that the Balcore in Shul wore a tall hat. The rabbi wore a crown. It was a crown. Right. There were two aspects of that. Yes, I, I, I wear the crown of B'nai Yisrael, but also I'm the leader, man. You better know I'm up here. <laughs> um, and, and the they used to have that in uh, Hebrew Institute, in uh, uh, Jewish Center for years. No, but, yeah, but we don't have it now. And the Chazan always wore a uh, a um, tall hat. They used to wear those tall silk hats. Yeah. And yeah. that uh, was a crown. Absolutely. Yeah. Ab absolutely. And I think... Away with that. Now we're humble. Humble. <laughs> well, we're humble. But that's, I guess that's where I think that our earlier idea and what Willa said is actually really helpful, which is that like there's a form of humility, but it's a humility that comes with a lot of pride. And, you know, the Jewish people have been stepped on there, you know, from generation to generation, someone's trying to step on us, and um, it can be disheartening. And here's here's the rabbis, here's the the blessings that they've instituted for us. Says, hold on a second, you're wearing a crown. It might not look like a crown. It might not be made out of gold. It mm -hmm. might not be, you know, crusted, you know, with diamonds. But it's a crown, mm -hmm. and it's a crown that you should feel, at least on the inside, you know, you you can feel uh, with as much regality as a as a a, you know, a crown and robe. Mm -hmm. Any any other thoughts on those blessings that we've discussed, or this one, Oteri Shabbat Farah? Before I I want to pose one last challenge to our interpretation tonight. Okay. Who here knows the blessing that you make before you eat a piece of bread? You after you've washed your hands, before you eat a piece of bread. Anyone want to? Say left the words. Hamotzi lecha min haaretz. Anyone want to tell me how to translate that blessing? Take take a shot at it. You know. Who? No wrong. Hmm. Is this? Let's see who pulls pulls forth pulls out um, the bread from the earth. The earth. Right, because God has made it possible that we can walk to our backyards, reach our hand into the dirt, and lift out a loaf of Wonder Bread. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. Well, not, not, not quite. Jewish rye. Jewish rye. Far, sorry, a rye, a rye. Um, 
<laughs> Obviously, that's not the case, right? It's a bizarre blessing. Um, we're eating this bread, and we say, Hamotzi lecha min haaretz. God, thank you, God, who brings bread forth from the land. God doesn't, I mean, excuse my blasphemy, but God doesn't bring bread forth from the land, right? As far as I know, as a, as a city slicker who's never worked a farm a day in his life, um, a farmer plants some seeds, you got the wheat or the rye, it grows, you have, to, you have to cultivate it, you have to harvest it, you have to maybe dry it, then you grind it, and then you combine the ground flour with other ingredients at the bakery, and then the, at the bakery, then they, they bake it, then, then you can get the bread, then you get the bread. Um, so what, what's, I, I like, it's a, it's a bizarre, you know, if we had said, you know, thank you, God, who, who helps bring chita uh, from the land, right? Like, who helps bring the grains from the land, that would be, that would make a lot of sense. But the, the language of the blessing, I find um, really bizarre. And um, well, I'd what, like to suggest, What do you yeah. find bizarre? What, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's Say, beautiful. Okay. It's, a, it's a symbolic thing. Yeah, again, okay. rock on every single thing we can, but this is a symbolic thing that God has given us nourishment, and if that doesn't fall from heaven, it's not mana. It takes but we have that, but, but we, but we have that blessing. We have shehakol nihia bidvaro, right? That everything was created in God's. What's that? That is a a basic substance. Okay, there's something special about bread. Yes. There's something special about bread. Great. I agree with you completely. Rina, were you about to, was someone else about to say something? I don't want to. Okay. Hedda? No. Well, no, I was just thinking, wasn't the bread was, uh, when Abraham gave, it was the bread that you bring, you know, the first to a new house also. So. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. So that it was the nourishment also. So. Oh, it's a staple of, it's yeah. a staple of our diet. But what I'd like to say, and I, by the way, I don't agree with everyone, and my, I'm, I was throwing out a bit of a red herring. I was trying to bait you with my saying it's a bizarre blessing. I think it's just a profound blessing that we don't stop and think about enough because um, it is such a bread is a staple was was and is a staple of of Jewish diets. And um, what's what's different about bread if you think about what people ate two thousand years ago. Um, you know, most things that people ate two thousand years ago. You ate it the way it grew, right? You, you might cook something, you'd heat it up. We process, there was no processed foods. You could pretty much, I mean, the, the main processed food was breads. I, th I mean, look, I'm going, I, I'm making this up. I am not an anthropologist. I don't know what I'm talking about. But in my simple mind, I'm saying bread is at least representing a category of food, which was a next step in human evolution, which is we don't just find the food maybe heat it up and then consume it. We do a lot of process there. And so then for us to say in our blessing, God brings the bread from the land is obviously a huge act of humility because we know how much work humans put into bringing a loaf of bread into, you know, to my house. For the loaf of bread to get to my kitchen table is insane. The other, a few weeks ago, I baked, ba I made bagels. I made homemade bagels. And when <laughs> that, that bagel came out of the oven, and I took the first bite, I felt like I was God. I had created a bagel. It was amazing, right? It was, I put so much work into making that bagel. Wait, Leia, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's the point. Uh, you may okay. have said this, well, my internet was cutting out and doing all kinds of crazy things. But, um, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating something you already said. But maybe that's the point. It's so clear, bread is so clear that man's making the bread. Right? We're making the bread. There's no bread that's rising forth from the earth. But then maybe the point is like, aha, but you didn't really make that bread, right? Like yep. you, you may have well, taken all the stuff that God gave you, and, but like there's a lot of God in the making of the bread. Oh, as Leia freezes again, I'm going to say, it's not that God, <laughs> it's not that you didn't make the bread. It's that you didn't make the bread alone. And I think it's, I think what I'm, I'd like to suggest is that the blessing is emphasizing a partnership between humanity and God. Okay. And that's where I want to now transition in the last few minutes that we have together back to our Birkota Shachar and suggest that what's here is not saying when I wake up in the morning, 
Thank you, God, because you, God, gave me sight. End of story. I'm now going to go about my day. No, God, you and I are in partnership to bring light to the blind. You and I, God, are in partnership to free the bound. You and I, God, are in partnership to um, protect the ecology that's essential for human existence. You and I, God, are in partnership to provide everyone with the sustenance that they need, with everything that they need. Going back to the, you know, my radical interpretation of Matira Sarim, right, God, you have created a, an environment where anything is possible, even the impossible is possible. It's my job to now partner with you and go do that important work. And so this, the, the you know, this, this class is being offered as part of the RAVIM committee. And I saved the, I saved the, the connection till the very last minute. But the idea that it's our obligation as a community to be connected to both our neighbors in, in, in White Plains and the, the struggles that other people are going through, whether or not we're also partners in the pain, we're partners with both the suffering and with God in finding the solution. And so um, whatever, the, whatever, whatever might drive you or, 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 or problems might speak to you, Malbisha um, Rumim, we're not it's not a miracle that when I wake up in the morning, I can pull my pants on. It's not, right? The miracle is that we can help provide people with dignity, that people are, that people are not, right, um, uh, uh, walking around feeling like, like um, you know, wh whether it's literally naked or feeling naked, feeling like they don't have anything um, to, to cover them with any respect. Um, the, the, the prayers here definitely speak to our individual moments of our days. And I think the mindfulness and meditation is really valuable in the morning. But the other reason I think we should stop and, and think for a moment when we say these blessings in the morning is because it can really drive us to, to accomplish some of the harder work, some of the harder partnership with God. Because although I really do think that God can permit the impossible, doesn't mean it becomes easy, right? And so a lot of the work that people are doing um, to change big problems in the world doesn't, it, there are no simple solutions um, and it takes a lot of work, but we're partners with God, the same way that God has made it possible for us to pull a loaf of bread out of a weird, a weird plant waving in the wind. Um, God can, God can create, uh, God can help us create the change in the world that we see, that, that we see is needed. Um, and that's, that's the other way, I think, uh, when we, when we start looking at these blessings the same way as Hamotzi Lachamin Haaretz, um, it's not God doing any of these things alone. It's God doing these in partnership with us. And especially you. the last Thank one. Thank you. Yes. Um, yes. I'm going to say, uh, save Koach. Strength to the weary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Possibly the most important one if, after, after all that, you know, you do all the others, right? You, you're giving people, you're giving, helping get people see, you're getting people dressed, you're helping save the world. It's exhausting. And then all we do at the end is say, give me more strength. I'm going in for round two, for, you know, the next round. The job, the, the work doesn't finish. Um, thankfully, we get our rest every night. Um, we say the Shema that a few people here have mentioned, you know, to, to send us into bed each, each, each night. And then we wake up again in the morning and we say, all right, I'm ready for another day. You can do this each week. Is this going to be a... <laughs> I... Analyzing this? Uh, um, <laughs> Yes, is no. We Not we quite. hope we hope for more, but there's also real life, so we have to we have to just savor our Aaron when we can get him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. I, I, I'm happy to do more of these. And I mean, this is the style of learning I enjoy, which is taking simple texts that most people are familiar with and finding new meaning in them. Um, wonderful. And that was great. Yeah, it, it definitely helps when there's a good group of people um, to help share. And so I do appreciate all of you adding so much to this and making it possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it was you. wonderful. Thanks. And thank you, Leah, for all the tech support. Despite your own internet problems, <laughs> you're the one who made this possible. I am so curious what the recording is going to look like. <laughs> oh, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, right? Okay. Great. Well, thank you all. Um, I hope you have a beautiful night, and I hope you say the Birchot Shachar tomorrow morning with a little bit of uh, extra intention. Thank you.
Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.